Welcome to the headlines. I'm Helen Nell. Thank you for joining us. Coming up in the show today, Fujian City volunteers in China are handing out scholarships to Navy students in Xiamen and Nanjing. City Foundation is holding a media conference to promote the upcoming sign language musical to members of the public. And Taiwan City volunteers in Suqing are holding events in schools to remind everyone of the importance of safeguarding our planet. In Indonesia, the 8 city volunteers' intensive training seminar was held from March 22nd to 24th. Nearly 500 volunteers from 15 different areas of the country gathered at the Jingsi Hall in North Jakarta to take part. After the three-day seminar, everyone went home wiser and inspired to spread city's message to more people. When we have too much going on outside, it's good to use this opportunity to come together and share the Dharma with each other. Through sharing their wisdom, nearly 500 members from the Indonesia chapter of Tsuji have gained much wisdom during the three-day volunteer training seminar. Being the first large-scale training seminar held locally in Indonesia, even volunteers from far away Biak Island knew they had to attend. It's such a special opportunity to have the volunteer intensive training seminar held in our own country. I will bring Master Zheng Yan's wisdom back to Biak Island and share it with all of the residents there. We will also continue to fight to end poverty. As the seminar goes on, live translations are held for those members who do not understand Mandarin. In this way, everyone is able to take note on what the Dharma Master from Jinsi Abode had to say. City is one big family, like a big melting pot. You put in all the iron, whether good or bad, into the furnace. If people are iron in this example, then daily affairs are like a hammer. After hammering on the iron for a while, the iron becomes steel and people are refined. Normally I translate Master Zheng Yan's life wisdom programming, so I'm familiar with the Master's message. This time I had an opportunity to translate for the intensive training seminar. It was a good challenge for me. It's a rare occasion to see such a large gathering of Indonesia city volunteers. Besides absorbing the Dharma, volunteers from Batam Island also made a deep vow. Although there are less than 100 volunteers in Batam Island, everyone present sincerely wishes for this vow to come true in a timely manner. The wisdom of Jin's abode masters and the Taiwan city volunteers brought with them has inspired us Indonesia city volunteers. We Batam city volunteers also want to make a vow to build our very own Jin's hall so that city spirit can continue to spread to all corners of Indonesia. In China, Fujian City volunteers traveled to Xiamen and Nanjing to hand out scholarships to underprivileged students. At these visits, volunteers not only distributed much-needed tuition help, but also shared words of wisdom with these youngsters in hopes of guiding them on the right path in life. As Fujian City volunteers arrived in Xiamen to hand out scholarships, <laughs> They also put on sign language performances and share words of wisdom with the students. During the visit, the volunteers can sense how much these students have grown up. Holding grudges towards others to protect oneself is a natural instinct of all human beings. But if we hurt others, we are only creating more harm for ourselves. After listening to the volunteers, I finally understand my parents' hardship. I hope all of you can call your parents more often. Another scholarship recipient, Dai Gui Mei, even wrote a letter to thank Master Zheng Yan. Let us vow with love to become a redless carp and turn this corrupt and treacherous world into one of purity and goodness. Here in Nanjing, students enthusiastically participate in a quiz on Jingsi Abrazams. At each scholarship ceremony, these youngsters not only receive tuition funds, but also emotional support. 
I'm very interested in joining Ziji. In the future, when I have the opportunity, I will definitely take part because I want to share my love with everyone. Understanding to be grateful for the love they have received and to pay it forward, the students are all guaranteed to a hopeful future. In May of 2012, two earthquakes with a magnitude of 6 and 5.8 hit Italy. Since then, Tsuji volunteers have carried out two relief distributions to help those affected by the quakes. Recently, volunteers once again carry out home visitations to see how residents are recovering. This bed set up on the ground level is where 88-year-old Teresa sleeps at night. Since the May tremor last year, the octogenarian no longer feels safe sleeping upstairs. I don't have any family members living with me. Thinking about that makes me cry. After the quack, with no one to talk to, many senior residents bottle up their fear and insecurity inside. 90-year-old Ines, who lives in solitude, is happy to have visitors. Apart from caring for needy families, city volunteers also visited the local government and Red Cross offices to get feedback on the shopping coupons previously handed out. The residents can use these shopping vouchers to buy daily necessities for their elderly family members or children. City volunteers have held two aid distributions in the aftermath of the disaster and each event saw local volunteers arriving to lend a helping hand. With the first anniversary of the tremor just two months away, many local residents are still struggling to come to terms with what happened, and city volunteers vow to continue to accompany the victims on the path to recovery. In Taiwan, teachers and students from Ciji's education mission in Hualien who have been putting on a sign language musical at the Sutra of Profound Gratitude to parents on March 30th. On Monday, the Ciji Foundation held a media conference to promote the upcoming performance to members of the public. Come the Saturday, March 30th, teachers and students from Ciji's education mission in Hualien will be putting on the sign language musical of the Sutra of Profound Gratitude to Parents. Ciji is also working with the government to spread this message of filial piety. The education ministry has designated family education as this year's theme. So at a time like this, holding a musical on filial piety is not only appropriate, but will also bring out the meaning and value behind such a message. To promote moral education and filial piety, the City Foundation is working with various media channels to produce a series of reports on role models in the region. I feel that in the series of interviews with teachers and parents, they have all shared the areas in which they would like to improve. Everyone faces the same issues, and the musical is a reminder for all to cherish those around them. In addition to media channels, Ziji also advertises the event on billboards across the county. There are approximately more than 50 billboards in Hualien County, and we hope through these electronic and printed advertisements, as well as the radio, to promote the message of the upcoming musical. In spreading the message of filial piety, city volunteers and performers hope that the slice of Chinese culture will find its way into the hearts and minds of future generations.
In a new series of reports on filial piety, we look at the eight aspects of life which leads to happiness. If someone were to ask what is happiness, everyone would have their own idea on what brings happiness. The foundation of traditional Chinese values lies in a harmonious family, and filial piety is an integral part of that. Hence, the first lesson towards finding a life of happiness is to fulfill filial duties towards our parents. Wealth is happiness. Happiness is when your dreams come true. Peace is happiness. When the family is together, that is happiness. Happiness is being able to be with your family each day. The core of Chinese values lies in family, and the strong sense of kinship can only be maintained through the fulfillment of filial duties. Happiness is when the whole family can be together. Li Mingyou's mother experienced a difficult labor while giving birth, which subsequently resulted in the weakening of the lower part of her body. I couldn't really take care of him due to my condition. As parents, we weren't able to be there for him during his childhood. I will be filial to my mother. <laughs> is having a healthy body. Our elderly is having a healthy body. That's happiness. Here in Quanjiao, China, not a day goes by without 62-year-old Wang Shouchen measuring the blood pressure of his 103-year-old mother. The eldest in the family, Wang Shoucheng, who is well into his 60s, will carry his mother on his back as they travel, their footprints having spread across Nanjing to Beijing. <laughs> having had to give up schooling due to poverty, Grandpa Li started working when young. With his righteous character, Grandpa Lee soon established his own maritime fleet and container terminal. And at the grand opening, he invited his mother as his guest of honor. Upon his mother's passing, Grandpa Lee continued to visit her at her gravesite each day. Grandpa Lee's mother was always kind to those who she met, and often encouraged her children and grandchildren to become someone who could contribute to society. There is a Chinese saying which implies that when we establish our character through the practice of filial piety, this reputable action will glorify our parents' name. To give is better than to receive. Happiness is reaching out to help others. During a flood which struck Honduras in 2011, Taiwanese businessman Zhang Hongcai and his son assisted Tsuji to carry out a large-scale distribution for flood victims. We need to care for the elderly and the disadvantaged. At the large-scale distribution in mid-November, Grandma Clara could be seen trembling and had difficulty in walking. Seeing this, Zhang Hongcai instructed his son to accompany the senior. When I carried her, she told me she has a problem with her spine. What she went on to share with me truly inspired me. She kept thanking me for helping her and said a prayer for everyone. We do not have a claim on our life, but only the right to use it. Thus, we can choose to only devote ourselves to our family, or we can choose to also serve the greater good. By making good use of our life to do what's meaningful for mankind and society, we can repay our parents for the body they have given us. Fulfilling filial 
owe duties to our parents is our only duty. And as long as we do what is right and continue down that path, we will find happiness. In Taiwan on March 23rd, as part of Earth Hour, Central District Ciching some various universities seized the opportunity to remind everyone of the importance of safeguarding the planet. First, we go to Donghai University in Taichung City to how Si Ciching's there are passing on the environmental concept to their fellow students. As a part of Earth Hour, as soon as the clock hit 7.30, students from Donghai University in Taichung City shut up their lights and showed up at the athletic field to join an event held by Cixing's. There are a lot of resources on the planet, not just electricity. Gas, water and money are all considered resources, however people have been using them carelessly. I'm very particular about conserving water. When I brush my teeth, I will only use the water I put in my cup, so I don't waste a lot of water. After listening to the Ciching speeches on environmental protection, these students are ready to put the concepts into practice. Moving to Nantou County, National Jinan University students use flashlights to create words of reminders. The students hope to raise awareness on the importance of cherishing our natural resources. Reducing our carbon emissions is like doing good deeds. We need to preserve the plant's resources for the next generation. And by doing so, the earth will also give us its best resources for use. Also contributing their share in protecting the planet are students from the National Formosa University in Yunlin County. On the morning of March 23rd, students walk along the streets picking up garbage and recyclables. I hope all teachings can learn while doing and awaken while learning. We need to participate in more events and contribute our share in safeguarding the planet. Passing on the concepts of protecting our Mother Earth, thanks to Ciching's, more students realize that it is not so hard to safeguard our planet. At the centennial anniversary of Dapi Elementary School, Yunling Ciji volunteers seized the opportunity to ed educate members of the public on the importance of environmentalism. While in Tainan at the Kunshan University, on the date of their regular recycling, Ciqing's encourage other classmates to practice recycling. <laughs> Here at Tainan's Kunshan University, Ciqing's have invented a game to inspire classmates to join ranks in saving on water, electricity, oil, time and money. When I go out or when electrical appliances are switched off, I'll pull the plugs. I'll also water plants with water which was used in washing vegetables. Sorting recyclables every Monday evening, Ciqing's and other classmates are sorting recyclables in the dark as they show their support for the movement by turning off all lights. We know it's not easy to do recycling. If everyone can join together, the earth will become cleaner and the burden of the recycling volunteers will be lightened. Turning off all lights and enjoying a night without light pollution, students can better connect with nature and realize that the best blessing they can give the earth is through the practice of recycling. <laughs> While in Yunlin, city volunteers could be found holding signboards to promote energy conservation. Among them, 77-year-old Liu Shuirong teaches residents how to sort recyclables. Once you keep a happy heart, you will forget all vexations and stay vigorous. The recycling volunteers are very dedicated as they are willing to educate these children on such a hot day. Their heart of devotion really moves us. At the centennial anniversary of Da Pi Elementary School in Yunlin County, city volunteers seized the opportunity to promote environmentalism at the event which is attended by 1,500 people. We can reduce our use of shampoo so to cut down on environmental pollution. This blanket is made from plastic bottles. 
To de recycle these PET bottles, I think dye technology does a great job as they have turned these PET bottles into blankets and sent them worldwide to help the needy. Later, volunteers also invite parents to take part in the dye mother class and lead children to write down words of gratitude on behalf of their mothers, adding a humanitarian touch to this celebratory occasion. Here in Taiwan, the largest recycling station in southern Taichung City recently opened its door to community members. Once an abandoned factory, the area has now been transformed into an environmental education center. Today is the grand opening of a new environmental education center here in southern Taichung City. The land, which occupies 595 square meters of space, was once the site of a factory. After three months of hard work, City volunteers transformed the abandoned building into a new and vibrant environmental education center. We didn't canvas for any donations. The cement and grout were all donated by suppliers. This piece of land was donated by City volunteer Tian Yi Shou, who hoped to provide a better environment for the volunteers to practice recycling in. I often saw brothers and sisters sorting recyclables outdoors sometimes in the rain or in the sun, so I wanted them to have a better place to do recycling. The center's exterior is surrounded by greenery and the walls are decorated with paintings drawn by students of the Tsitin Club. It looks great now. When I pass here every day, I will come have a look. Tsitin has made this place beautiful again. The paintings of Taiwan's protected animal species on the wall are a pleasing sight for all those who pass by. Not only have Tiji volunteers transformed this once abandoned factory into an environmental education center, but thanks to their efforts, an environmental protection movement has taken root in the community as well. As water restriction has been implemented in many parts of Taiwan, how do we make the best use of our water resources? In our next report, we meet city volunteer Wang Guinan, who can do many things with a bucket of water, and Wang Jianfu, who collects rainwater and uses them in times of need. As water restrictions have been implemented in many parts of Taiwan, what can we do with a bucket of water? Let's meet city volunteer Wang Guinan and see how she makes the best use out of it. I will first use the water to wash vegetables because it is clean. Next, I will use it to wash soap off the dishes. After these two steps, the water is still clean. Next, Wang Guinan will use the water to clean dish towels before using it to flush the toilet. The water goes through five steps before being discarded. To safeguard the planet, Wang encourages her neighbors to do so too. I will put a bucket under the sink and the collected water will be used to water the flowers. Also doing his share in protecting the environment is city volunteer Wang Jianfu, who collects rainwater. He says he has collected seven buckets full of rainwater from last winter that can be used in times of need. A while ago, water resources were restricted, so my neighbors asked me for water. Understanding the importance of cherishing water resources, city volunteers not only tried their best to conserve water, but also encouraged those around them to join the effort. We stay in Taiwan at the end of the show. The executive of Yuan recently made a documentary to let members of the public know the current living conditions of those affected by Typhoon Morocot in 2009. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye.